The reality of the Gospel World Outreach Ministries presents the Voice of Deliverance broadcast, featuring the explosive preaching, bold teaching, and the powerful prayer of deliverance of Heaven's Ambassador, Leonard Ford. Brother Ford is a minister that does what others don't, and he has a ministry that goes where others won't. He and his wife, Jesse travel across America and around the world, preaching hope and bringing deliverance. Whether they are in the church, under the gospel tent, or on the mission field, they boldly declare that if you continue in the word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I present to you, Brother Ford. The Lord shall establish you a holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Have you understood the day how things are trying to get you away from the commandments of God? Pull you away from it's a subtle trick of the enemy. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. That's the divine reverence and respect. We talk about now. You know how it used to be just for when I was a little boy. I mean, that was a man we call Mr. White Shoes. When Mr. White Shoes came up, now I never did smoking stuff. I just gambled. I didn't do that. Other stuff was crazy to me. I worked too hard to burn my money up. I wasn't smoking no cigarettes. Come on. But the brother, the brother that did smoke, when Mr. White Shoes started across the highway, they would take a cigarette and cut it between two fingers and put it down in their pocket and burn a hole in their pocket and let the smoke go down their legs. The White Shoes wouldn't know they was. How you boys of time? They, 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 you know, then you see some of them, they got their they leg get to move down. They got that cigarette too close. Them boogers be sitting there wiggling, but they wait for Mr. White Shoes to leave so they can get that out of their pocket. But now they ask White Shoes, you got a light? No, 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 no. What? We want to blame it on society, don't we? I blame it on us not walking in our spot. Because there's still places that I go. And folks say, man, you can't say that. You see Reverend Ford. Let's stop that. I'm sorry, Reverend. Other folks say, Reverend, you got to excuse me. No, I don't. No, I don't. If you can act for forgiveness before you say it, then don't say it. Reverend, you know you're right. But you just say, well, God, he, no, 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 you is the ambassador. Can't take that attitude, talking about God. If you, no, 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 you, you represent God. You should be telling them better than that. My wife and I was in Wendy's, and somebody came over there, and the place closed, and we just back there talking. They said, um, ain't you Reverend Ford? I said, yeah. She said, I was a little girl in Brinkley, Arkansas. You came to our church and preached. And she said, I, I told him, I said, wait a minute, don't, put, don't play that music because that's a preacher. And she said, that's a real preacher. And she came and she said, they finna play some music in the ceiling. And I told her, I got to ask you, is it okay? I said, is it praise and worship? She said, no. I said, well, then don't play it. She gave me a choice to choose. Well, you know, y'all working here. We'll just leave. We didn't just leave. I think that was an opportunity to let them know there is a difference. And you have, if you got a choice, then choose. Watch verse 10. All the people shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Verse 11. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your cattle, in the fruit of your crown, in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers to give you. See, when you obey in the scripture, and you bring in God his tithe, then you obey in the voice, and you in getting involved in what God tell you to get involved in. And you sell when he say sell, and you buy when he say buy. You move when he say move, and you stand still, and know that I am God. Stand still, and and see the salvation of the Lord when he tells you to. Folks, you become a proverb to folks. They can't figure out how he, what is he doing? He must, he must be peddling. All right, let me get off of that. The Lord, watch verse 12, shall open under thee, uh-oh, now, his good treasure. Not, not no S, he, just one, one storehouse of the Lord. The heaven, see, the heaven, to give thee rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of the other. Oh, you see, you got something to do. You just thought he was just going to open up heaven, just pour it on. Now he's going to bless the work of your hand and thou shalt lend to many nations and thou shalt not borrow. Some of y'all got to pay folks back first. But you can, anyway, can't lend or borrow because you owe. Verse <laughs> I didn't even look up. Verse 13, verse 13, verse 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath 
if thou shalt hearken to the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to do and to observe them. You see, we want to be promoted. We want to be the captain. We want to be the boss. We want to be the supervisor. But you later than everybody. You lazier than everybody. You talk back. You know, you're critical. You don't know how to talk. You frown all day long. Every time somebody says something, you're stomping your foot, your voice, then raised up five octaves, and you think somebody's going to promote you. You ain't no drill sergeant. Come on here. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. Acts 16. See, so many times we follow another thing. That's trendy. God said, don't follow the trend. Set the trend. That's another story for another day. Acts 16, verse 7. And they, when they were come to Mysia. Now, I want you to pay attention. Didn't God say go into all the world and preach the gospel? Watch this. They will come to miss you, and they are saved. They tried. They were bent on. They were thinking about going into Bithynia. But the Spirit, that's a capital S, the Holy Spirit, what? Suffered them not, mean allowed them not. He wouldn't let them go preach. What? Them folk over there in the project need to hear the word, and the Holy Ghost tell you, don't you go over there. Come on here. See, it ain't got nothing to do with fear. It's all about the fear of the Lord. Now, if God is telling you don't go there, then God means don't go there. And I'm not so much talking about negative things happening. I'm talking about you being in the wrong place at the wrong time, so you're wasting time that God wanted to invest it over here. You over here doing something that looks like something that's going to get somebody to acknowledge you and recognize Recognize you because you go in the project and preach. You boy, you no, 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 no. God said, I don't want you over there. You trying to go over there. God said, Don't go there. And at the time he said, Don't go there, he didn't tell you where to go. He just said, Don't go there. And when you accepted that, watch what happened. And they passing by missed you. See, they was gonna go there, but they passed by and came down the Troad. They passed by where they were going to stop. And sometimes people try to get you to stop places where inside is telling you keep going. Watch this. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. So after they passed by the place, after they obeyed God and didn't go to Messiah, now that night Paul gets a vision, hallelujah, that stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying, come over into Macedonia and help us. And watch this. And after he had seen the vision, what happened? Hear clearly and do what? See, in that vision, we talked about it in the classroom, how in my, in, and we talked about how to be led by the Spirit, and we said sometimes God speaks to us in visions. So Paul had the vision, and immediately, watch this, not Paul, but who? We endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called who? Not just Paul, but us for to preach the gospel unto them. So you got to understand that we, we will come to, we, to uh, miss you. We was going to go there and the Spirit of God suffered them not. So that's us not, right? So you got to understand something here. And then he said, now we gathered that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. And the God said, don't preach in miss you this time. I need you down here in Macedonia. Now here's something we got to understand. Just because I am where God told me to go does not mean that there will be no opposition. There will be no affliction. There will be no friction. What are you saying? Paul said, I don't know where I'm going, but I know this. The Holy Ghost witnesses to me. Every city I go in, bonds and chains await me. If I go down there, I'm going to meet some trouble, but I'm going to sign the go. I got, he said, I'm bound in my spirit to go. That means my spirit man is holding me and letting me know this is the assignment. It's inside of me. That's what you got. It's hard. See, some of us want to go just where it's easy. And wonder why you never make a difference. So you got some folks want to write a book because they think, if I write this book and I sell it for seventeen dollars, if I can just get a hundred folks to buy the book, that's seventeen hundred. Then I'll just keep spitting them out. See, your book ain't gonna sell. Watch this. Watch verse eleven. Therefore, loosing from Troy as we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neapolis, and from thence to Philippi, that's Macedonia, the capital city, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia and a colony, and we were in that city abiding certain days. Notice they ain't met the man that was in the dream yet. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made, and we sat down and spoke Speak unto the women, where the man that they saw in the dream. God just used the vision to get him there. It was the man was saying, come and help us. They ain't going to meet the man till they get in prison. 
See that? See how that went? Oh, well, I don't want to meet that one. I just watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Ah, thank you, Jesus. He said, and we sat down and spake to the women which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended to the thing which was spoken to Paul. He got there, and he got somebody attentive, and we know the rest of the story. Amen. They, they, after a few days, they cast the demon out. They go to jail, and then God shakes it up. Hallelujah. He gets to jail and saved everybody in prison. Nobody runs off. They get saved, and then they get a, a escorted by the Romans out of there. But they got beat in the meantime, but they were in obedience to God. You got to understand. God told me to go to a particular city and preach because he said, I want you to bless my people. Now, they, I, I knew when I was going, I'm going to preach for a rascal. You understand? Because I told him I ain't coming. God said, I want you to go. Go, go bless my people, and I'll bless you in your next revival. I'm telling you, the little boogie just lied to me. Amen. Stole the money out of my offering. Didn't know he had a little honest deacon on the board. A little honest deacon counting the money every night, giving me the true count. That, that When I get ready to leave that night, they bring me about a third of it, you know. But it didn't matter because God said, be there. I'm going to bless you in your next revival. See, sometimes when you're in a certain place in obedience to God, flesh may not enjoy it. It may not feel good to flesh. It may, not, it may put a little pressure on your mind. You might be... You might be glad you got a permit to carry you. <laughs> you might be want to just shoot your way up out of there. <laughs> I feel a Jesse James or nothing coming on me. Go get my money. No, 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 no. I'm obeying God. I'm flowing with God. God told me to go. It don't matter if you don't give me nothing. God going to get me back home. Cause, but, but I will not be without. Why? God is going to take care of me. 1 Kings 17, 1 Kings 17, 1 Kings 17. See, I'm trying to get us to understand. We got to hear clearly, but we got to obey quickly. We got to obey immediately. We got to obey to the full. That's what God has told us to do. Make it a priority. When God tells you to do something, then move on in it. Why? Because God has always got something up. Yeah, I want you to understand. When he tell you to, hey amen, give up some of your time, it's because he's going to give you some of his. See, God know how to redeem the time. You, Oh, Lord, my wife and I, and we've been in a lot of places now, but we, had a, we have never been to Cancun, Mexico. Our first vacation that we ever scheduled was Cancun, Mexico. And guess what happened? I'm preaching and revival broke out. And they asked me to stay. The trip was paid for. You know what we did? We called a pastor and his wife who ain't never been on a trip. And we gave them a trip paid for to Cancun, Mexico. They came back so three didn't even send us a postcard while they was there, though. Come on. I'm trying to get you to understand. It was a seed that we saw that we gave up, hallelujah, to, to go ahead on and meet the needs of God's people. But I'm trying to tell you, some folks be like, I look, Pastor, when I get back from Cancun, we can we pick this back up. No, 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 just, just learn to obey him and obey him clearly. When you hear clearly, obey him quickly and just watch him bless you. Watch him multiply the seed that you have sown. First Kings 17, verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, now we know he'd been by the brook. We started him at the brook, right? Raven's showing up twice a day. But now he the brook dries up, but he don't move because the brook dried up. Never move because of a situation because you're moving based on what you see. And we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. So when the situation Situation changes, check in with God and all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. It's a famine going on. You can have a heat stroke and die trying to leave a dry brook. You better let God lead you where you're supposed to go next. So the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have, I'm, I'm ahead of you. I've already went there. I commanded a widow woman there to sustain me. Wait a minute, God. Don't tarnish my reputation. I can't be staying with no widow. You told me to shun the appearance of evil. That don't look good. I'm dying there. I'm a man. She a woman. Everybody know I ain't got no wife. She ain't got no husband. Folk gonna be talking. No, oh, Lord. Send me somewhere else. And, and you got a couple that can sustain me. We go to negotiating with God. But brother, what that makes sense to me. I know. I know it makes sense to you. I'm trying to tell you to hear clearly and obey quickly, but you, you, you and your soul deliberating. Because you trying to protect you. Like God, Lord, you, I know Lord, you busy right now. You just, but May the 23rd through the 27th, that's Monday through Friday, I want to invite you to join me at Zoe Bible Church. That's 1209 Pratt Road, right here in the city of Little Rock. 
Zoe Bible Church, Pastor Iverson and First Lady Mary Jackson will be celebrating 25 years of ministry, 25 years of Zoe Bible Church. And 25 years ago, we put the tent up, started that church with them. And so 25 years later, we're going to go back. And I know, I know the day that we live in, now, everybody do a day and a half, but we're going to do five full nights of Holy Ghost Revival. So I want to make you plan, make, I want you to make plans to meet us at 1209 Pratt Road at Zoe Bible Church, 7 p.m. every night, Monday through Friday, May 23rd through the 27th. And then the very No, 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 no. Verse 10 tells the story. So he what? Arose and went. He heard clearly. He obeyed quickly. He went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, not a, but what? The widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And she said, As she was, and, uh, and he said, As she was going, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, some bread too. I need some bread. And she said, As the Lord thy God live, who bought God up? Who brought God into the situation? She did. She heard from God before he got there. But circumstances have made her talk herself out of obeying God. Preacher, you, you know, if you'd have been here a few days ago, I would have gladly gave you some bread. But today, <laughs> this is going to feed me and my boy. You know, I, you know, I can't, can't neglect my kids. You know, I, mean, I got to eat. So uh, I can't do what you're saying. Let, let's move the man for a second. I can't obey God now. It's too late. I'm too broke. It's too... No, 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 no. Here clearly. She couldn't obey before the prophet got there, right? Because he said, sustain you. So now that he's here, she, just, she was not seeing the opportunity to obey God and, and, and whatever God told her. Because if God told her to sustain him, you got to know God told her something was going to happen behind her sustainers. So she says now, now watch this. I have not a cake, but I got what it takes to make one. So what's the problem? But a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I'm gathering up two sticks that I may go in and dress it. So she got the, she got the ingredients and the recipe uh, for me and my son that we may eat and die. And it is very human nature to put yourself first. The, the survival of the fittest. And I'm down to my last. I ain't going to be no fool now. And the Bible said, and Elijah said unto her, fear not. See, he know you done heard another voice. You've been hearing somebody else. Go and do as thou hast said. Feed you and your child. But make me thereof a little cake first. He didn't say out of it, but there, in other words, don't use all of it on me. Take, give me a portion first. Because he's, he's in God's stead right here. And then watch this. Make me my cake first and bring it to me. And then afterwards, make, so in other words, divide the meal, make me a cake first. Now, how many know you're going to see a deficit here? It looked like deficient. Man, if I make, that's a man. I can't make him no silver dollar pancake. I, I got to take him a decent cake. I take him a decent cake, man. This, I ain't going to, I'm going to have to just feed the boy. See, that's how you're talking. Ain't no faith involved in what you're saying. But I'm trusting God because the man just confirmed what God told me before he got here. Just like he recognized her. She knew this was the man of God. That's why she said that the Lord your God liveth. But to her surprise, she had a part to play first. God didn't move to after she did. See, when God spoke to her, he spoke to the man. If the man stayed by the brook, I believe God would send her somebody else that she can sow into. But because the man obeyed, now it's her opportunity to obey. And when he gets there, she does what he tell her to do. And the Bible says, and she said, I have not a cake. But he said, I'm going to eat and die. But the man of God says, fear not. Do what you said. Make me a cake first. Bring it to me. Then make one for you and for your son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crews of oil fail until the day that the Lord sent rain upon the earth. I believe that was full of confirmation. I believe God had already told her those very words. And when she heard those words, look at verse 15. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her household did eat. And the Hebrew says one full year. 
one full year. Why? I'm going to eat and die. I got enough to eat today and die. I can go about six weeks and be dead, starvation, but I can sow and live. Sometimes you got to understand that your mind is saying you're going to eat and die. Stretch that little bit as far as you can. And your spirit is saying, obey God. Whatever God is saying, do you do? Second Kings, and we're going to get out of here. Second Kings chapter 4. I'm just trying to get you to understand when we hear clearly. Sometimes it saves our physical life. Y'all know Naaman. Some people want to call him Naaman. However you call him, he Naaman the man. Hallelujah. The Syrian came down there. And the, 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 the maid said, there's a prophet in some marry you. If you go down there, he can cure your leprosy. And then he following the natural protocol. He go to his king, get a letter to the king of Samaria, and go to the king, asking the king to heal him. Now, I don't have nothing against protocol. If you're going to do it that way, I think you should go to your king and say, listen, my maid said there's a prophet down there in Samaria. Who's the king down there? I know you know kings know kings. Can you give me a letter to go see that king to get permission to go see the prophet in his kingdom so I can get healed and come back and serve you? But no, he's going to do it his way. He's going to bypass the prophet and go king the king. And the king ripped his clothes saying, what? He trying to pick a fight? You know I can't hear leprosy. And, but the prophet heard about it. He didn't send that boy to me. Mr. Pomp and Circumstance come down. Now, this is Naaman. He's the captain for the king. The king leans on his hand. He's the king's personal bodyguard. He is the king's, amen, chief defense officer. He goes down there and he says... Go tell him to dip in the water of Jordan seven times. The Bible says he rough. We, we call him mad. He mad. What, wait a minute. You a leper. They said the prophet can get you healed. The prophet gave you an instruction. Don't cost you nothing. You try to give him some money. He don't even want that. Just go dip in the river. And dip how many times? Six won't do this. Five won't do this. Three won't do this. If you're going to obey, you got to go down seven times. And the Bible said he headed back to Samaria, back to, he got to Syria. But he had somebody with him that wasn't just a yes man. He's the captain. No, no, he called him Father Hunter. If the man, he said, I know you. If the man would have told you something great to do, you would have jumped on it. You would have been on it like a duck on a June bug. Man, you would have been down there. He just told you something simple. See, sometimes we want to complicate what God tells us. He gives you something very simple to do. And when you do the simplest little thing that look like it is not going to make any difference, it's the game changer. Elisha, their cry, verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me what you got to work with. What's in your house? She said, I ain't, I ain't got nothing. I have not anything in my house, said this little pot of oil. See, can, now, now, look, can, can you imagine? I mean, her pot could have been bigger than this. My point is this. All the oil I got is already contained, right? So why do I need something bigger than this or other than this to try to pull the oil out of this into? You got to understand, my need in my mind is so big, I don't have a seat. But when I'm asked, I remember, I got a little part of oil. I got a seed. Watch the man of God. Watch the man of God. Then he said, go borrow the vessels abroad of hut all your neighbors. Everybody in the county, go get, go get some vessels. Even empty vessels, borrow not a few. See, that takes your reasoning out of the picture. Because again, all my oil is in this pot. All my oil is already contained. Why do I need another vessel? Simply because the word of the Lord said, go buy as many as you can. And watch this. Watch the instructions here. He said, and after you get that done, when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door. Now you borrow from everybody in the county, but you don't ask nobody to come help you. You don't bring nobody in on this. You just let them know you're going to bring their pot back. When you get to the house, shut the door. 
Watch it now. When you come in, you shall shut the door upon thee and upon thy son. Not your not nosy rosy next door. Not your BFF. Not your prayer partner. And thou shall pour out out of your pot into all the vessels. Huh? Is that what he said? Watch this now. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. Do you think they went out there and borrowed the smallest vessels they could get? Well, let's see. Mama pot is this big. So give me a thimble. No, 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 no. You know why? Because these boys don't want to be slaves. These boys do not want to be in debtor's prison. I can see them say, man, give me that 55-gallon drum you got over there. Come on, give me, give me, give me, give me that wheelbarrow you got. Give me the biggest thing you got. Why? Because if, if the man of God said God going to get involved, then give me a God-sized container. I ain't finna limit God. Give me something God could work with it. And they went back and the Bible said, watch this. So she went from him and the Bible said, and shut the door. She, what I'm trying to show you is she heard clearly. Now she's obeying. She's doing precisely what she was told to do. Don't circumvent when God tells you to do something. Do what he said. Stop trying to figure it out. Just obey him. That's why you hear clearly and you know exactly what to do. He's going to take care of the rest of it. So he went from her, shut the door upon her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and poured out. It came to pass when the vessels, plural, were full that she said to her son, bring me yet a vessel. Bring me another the vessel. He said there is not a vessel more. And look, the all what? Stayed. Her all stopped running. It did not run out. It ran until she didn't have no more room to receive. You need to enlarge your capacity to receive because God is going to multiply what's in your hand and when you get through what you started we're still going to be there. You the 23rd through the 27th. That's Monday through Friday. I want to invite you to join me at Zoe Bible Church. That's 1209 Pratt Road, right here in the city of Little Rock. Zoe Bible Church, Pastor Iverson and First Lady Mary Jackson will be celebrating 25 years of ministry, 25 years of Zoe Bible Church. And 25 years ago, we put the tent up, started that church with them. And so 25 years later, we're going to go back and I know, I know the day that we live in now, everybody do a day and a half, but we're going to do five full nights of Holy Ghost Revival. So I want to make you plan, make, I want you to make plans to meet us at 1209 Pratt Road at the Zoe Bible Church, 7 p.m. every night, Monday through Friday, May 23rd through the 27th. You have been encouraged through the uncompromising message that you heard today. If you would like to have this message in its entirety, Send $8 for compact disc or $20 for video to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you would like to become a partner with this ministry, you may do so by joining the Ally 200 Club at $25 a month, or you may become a Truth Ally for $10 or more each month. Send your offerings to the Reality of the Gospel Ministries Incorporated, P.O. Box 1640-91, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72216. If you continue in God's word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free.